How are you, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Seth Julian, welcoming you to today's Don Farm Payroll Live Trading event. Uh, how do you do, Osama? Uh, I see Osama. I can't see the screen. I'd like to know from all of you whether you can see the opening screen and um, hear my voice. And if that is the case, we can begin. So please indicate on the question uh, uh, area whether you can hear my voice, see the opening screen, and we'll begin forthwith. Yes, says Sudeep. Great. Okay, that's good enough. Loud and clear, says Keegan. Beautiful. Everybody's in. Yep, says San Sanisa. Beautiful. Lots of people. Lots of people in the room today. We got a crowded room today. However, that uh, good screen, clear voice. Thank you, Osama. Wonderful. So, look, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to make you aware of the one and only uh, protocol we have in the room, and that is to please ask your questions in real time. It makes more of a dialogue rather than a monologue, and we don't want any unwanted comas to occur. Let me introduce you myself. I'm Seth Julian. I'm the chief uh, global strategist here at Alvexo. I'm 64 years old. I've been trading in the capital markets now for 51 years. I have a lot of experience uh, trading all sorts of assets. And um, this event is really the, the granddaddy of the live trading events. So let's get right into it. Um, oh, sorry. What is the non-farm payroll report? It's the total of the number of jobs added to or subtracted from the U.S. economy over the last month, net of farm workers, hence the silly name. Now, um, why is it important? Because it provides an important indicator of the health of the world's largest economy. It is the most widely followed, one of the most widely followed events on the monthly economic calendar. What are the effects of its outcome? If the results are approximately equal to or greater than the expectation, the U.S. dollar is likely to strengthen. If the result is less than the expectation, the U.S. dollar is likely to weaken. Now, please note the bold, red, italicized, underlined word likely. That word, that those effects are there for a reason because there's risk here. We're going to go into the different risks, but I want it clear and understood to everybody that you'd only be trading money in the capital markets, not investing, I say, but trading, because we're traders here, with money you can afford to lose, because we all lose, including myself. I'm not right all the time, and I don't pretend to be. But over the long run, we make more money than we lose, and that, after all, is the sine qua non of success in this business, making more than you lose. But rest assured, you will lose. We all lose. Everybody loses. There's risk here. And what is risk? For those of you who are unaware, for the newcomers, risk is the probability of the unexpected occurring, and occur it does. So leave us not pretend that this is some get-rich-quick scheme that you can't lose. Don't believe the nonsense you see on the Internet. There's risk here, and real risk. And that risk is losing your capital in the trade or even more. So beware. Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. How can the results be exploited? Well, we wait to see the true market reaction to the outcome. And we'll come back to what that means in a moment. Not the knee-jerk reaction. In other words, if the report comes out positive, we don't simply buy the U.S. dollar long. We wait to see how the market reacts. And you'll note, remember, those of you who were with us last month know that the report came out quite positive, and yet there was very little, there was nothing to be had for, for, for the excitement. Came out positive, and the market did nothing. So we'll talk about the different reactions that are possible as we proceed. Uh, we look for trades that can uh, trade along with it, and those trends will stay in train from a few minutes to several days or more. I'll show you as we proceed. Uh, we've had trades that I've held over the weekend that, as you know, are, are expensive to hold positions over the weekend, yet they're still profitable despite the expense. Now, one could look, trade six currency pairs during the event, and let's look at a potential setup on the platform. We, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, this is just a chart from Forex Factory telling us what the report is, past events, et cetera, et cetera. This is a histogram of past events which we'll go into, this is an old chart, so this is just an example, but we'll go when we go to, when we're done with this little presentation, which won't take 10 minutes, we'll go into the real data and I'll show you what's really going on. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the crux of the matter, the essence of what we're up to today. If you come away with nothing from this pre the presentation part, please take careful note of this setup. In the event of a positive outcome, and again, that's, uh, equal to or greater than the expectation. I think it's 328, but we'll get to that in a moment. The dollar is likely to strengthen. And therefore, of the six pairs, we've got Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar, yen dollar, Swiss dollar, cat. And note carefully the placement. Dollars on the right, 
dollars on the left, in the event of a positive outcome where in the dollar does indeed strengthen, these pairs with the dollar on the right will go down. And that is for the simple reason that these, the, I didn't write it here, but oftentimes these pairs are written with a slash, which are like here, put cell, between them. That Those are not grammatical indicators. That is a mathematical indicator indicating proportionality or a ratio. Excuse all this beeping. Um, I'm sorry for this. Just get rid of those. What that means is the exponent on the left-hand side of any capital asset, whether it's gold, oil or wheat or rice or, or foreign exchange, the left-hand element has an exponent of one. It's the right-hand element that moves on the Y vertical axis of the graph that is variable. And therefore, the left-hand currency is called the base currency, or in the case of an asset, it's called the base. And the right-hand element is called the variable, the, uh, the variable uh, element. So as the dollar strengthens, it will take less dollars to buy the one Aussie. Is that clear to everybody? Uh, Harley asks, why is the uh, Kiwi not included? Uh, because, first of all, six is plenty. Harley, six currencies are, are quite plenty. And it's not, it's, not, it's not one of the majors. Although we look at the, as you know, if, you, if you're a client in the house, uh, we, we talk about Kiwi really regularly. What are the news platforms you suggest to get the latest on financial markets? We'll get to that later, Keegan. Uh, and the opposite, of course, again, talking about the positive outcome for the dollars on the left. As the dollar strains, it will cost more yen or more Swissy or more loony to buy the singular dollar. And, of course, the inverse, in the case of the negative, these propositions are reverse. If it becomes negative, it costs more dollars to buy the singular Aussie euro or, or, or sterling, and therefore those go up and uh, less your uh, yen, Swissies, or loonies to buy the singular dollar. Is that clear to everyone? That is the most important thing, and I'll tell you why it's, it's, it's important for a lot of reasons. But there's another reason, and that is because in live trading events, they're very exciting, and I've been trading this event for, I don't know, decades already. It's fascinating to me. But the possibility, the potential for this execution is very, very high. It's exciting. It's quite, and it's, yeah, if it's the wrong button, you're in the wrong position. And ain't nothing you can do but get out and lose money. So in order to forestall that eventuality, I want you to have your foot on this. This is not a, a necessarily intuitive. If go after time, it will become intuitive to you. But you need to have your head, you need to keep your wits about you in a live trading event. That's why I call you and I really suggest you take a screenshot of this or if you go over the film, look at this again. By the way, the session is being recorded. Is it? Let me just make sure. Should be. Yeah, it's being recorded. So you will get, um, you'll be able to follow this or, or review this uh, at your leisure. Excuse all this soaping, but um, that's the information age. We get too much information. All right, then let us continue. Uh, this is about the. Uh, trading platform it's also set up in a similar way not exactly euro on the dollar on the left uh, or, or dollar on the right fairly rigid it's not exactly rigid for technical reasons but the idea again is to keep my um, arrangement fairly stable so that I don't miss execute my trade here's an example of that we took held uh, well over the weekend and it came out quite positive on these positions over the weekend so it's possible I don't suggest all the time, but it does happen. And I'll get to it. Now we're going to talk about the risk factors involved here. And I want you to pay careful attention to this because I go through this little dance, not because I'm obligated, though I am, but because it's true. I have an obligation, not only legally, but morally as a, as a registered securities dealer, um, to make you well aware of this. Um, Particularly for beginners, the lure of fast and easy profits can easily shatter on the rocks of market fickleness. That's the risk. The market can be very full here. It doesn't always behave the way we expect it. The trades one enters, enters into to exploit the non-farm payroll report have a high likelihood of transpiring according to expectation, meaning that the cause and effect between the outcome and the report and the market's reaction to that outcome are likely to occur in the way one anticipates they will. However, they sometimes don't. That is the risk in all capital market activity, 
the probability of the unexpected occurring. This is the very definition of risk, and occur it does. Now, the reason we wait a few seconds or more after the release of the report to enter positions is precisely to witness what the market's reaction is. This is so because sometimes the market simply does not react in the expected way. There are no two ways about this. These are human beings participating in an entirely human undertaking. This is, after all, why economics is a social science and not a natural science. Despite the the strenuous attempts by economists and financiers over the millennia, I might add, to represent themselves and their thoughts as scientific, they are not. These are probabilistic worlds using deterministic tools. This is a deterministic world, engineering, science. This means that what is understood to be a constant phenomenon can be built upon with certainty. Buildings can rest on these certainties. Civilizations can be built on them. Um, we, and we do and uh, rely on them to be uh, consistent. This world is no such thing, okay? This world is a social science because they attempt to understand a human enterprise. Humans are emotional, irrational, erratic, and often do not act in their own economic interests, contrary to the popular or the, or the accepted uh, classical economic wisdom, which is mostly nonsense. Therefore, there is a significant element of risk in their behavior, in their behaviors, that is market traders, and as individuals in their collective behavior as a market. The herd instinct, and that's the predominant um, psychology in, a, in the capital market, the mob, is the precise unifying principle explaining the market's behavior. Forget the graphs, the charts, the indicators, and algorithms that are economics, economists voice as deterministic tools of the trade. They're not. It's a fall, we follow along like these giant uh, herds of animals on the hoof, livestock on the hoof, or fish schooling, or birds flocking. Only the creatures in the very uh, outside can see the, the, the risks of predation, or water hazards, or geographic or topographic hazards. The rest of them have to follow along. They follow signals by the, by the creature in front of them, uh, like we do. We make our living from the breadcrumbs that fall from the tables of the people who actually uh, have controlling interests and controlling power in the markets. And we live from those breadcrumbs that fall. So we have to be very attuned to the signals that the market puts out. Uh, again, these are probabilistic tools that we use. That mean, well, I'll tell you what it means. This means that we can say that under particular circumstances, say the NFP report, we expect the market to behave a certain way with a certain probability. In other words, when X occurs, Eight out of 10 times, Y will happen. Will not happen 10 out of 10 times, nor can we be sure which of the 10 times will behave like the eight. Risk, it doesn't always have a familiar face, ladies and gentlemen. Is that clear to everybody? I really want you to understand that because it's the essence of, or it's an important, it's an essential element of what we're up to here. So let's, uh, let that, that ends the formal part of our presentation. Let me, uh, continue now with us. Uh, um, we'll, we'll go into the live screen. So, um, okay, we'll get to some of the questions uh, in a moment. This is uh, investing.com. These are these uh, uh, um, economic calendar are, are visible all over the internet. Here we have the non farm payroll report right there. We're expecting an addition of 325,000 jobs. That is very significant. I want to do take a slight digression here and show you the real histogram, up to date histogram of what we're talking about. Notice this, of course, is March uh, or, or the April report, but it came out in uh, the May report, which shows the huge decline uh, with Q1, the end of Q1 2020. So it throws up 2,200K, 2,000Ks, 20 million jobs. So it throws out, it, it, it skews the entire report. If we leave out that report, we see, again, these are fairly large numbers in their own right. This is the recovery right after. That's another four, uh, 40, what is that? Uh, four, four million, 800,000 jobs that came back and it's been adding ever since in huge numbers. But when we see that giant data point here, and let me show you the, chart, the historical chart without that data point. Let me remove that. 
And we see, we the thing dances more or less between 250 and 500. This, of course, is the great financial recession. So it dips down to 750,000 jobs lost. But that's the order of magnitude. Two and a half, a quarter of a million to half a million added. Uh, something that when recessions strike, a quarter of a million down. When the great financial crash occurred, um, we lost several million. But again, it, it, it recovers pretty quickly. Not from the pandemic. Okay, so when the pandemic comes, it skews the whole chart, and that is the effect of that skewing. Now, uh, let's talk about um, the, the quick reaction. to that. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? This is a chart of the six major currencies we trade. And, and you see, it's, there's enough here. This goes back to uh, um, Howley's question, where's the, where's the Kiwi? There's enough here for us to trade. Now, again, notice the similitude of the grouping. Aussie dollar, uh, euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar, yen dollar, Swiss dollar, CAD. These are one minute charts. Let's make sure that's the case. They're all for one minute. These three reactive charts show us what happens uh, right after the report release. Now, I do caution you about several things, and this is a good opportunity to talk about the different uh, the, uh, possibilities of outcomes here. First is that you'll notice right before the report, these reports are going to, these charts are going to start trending because the rookies and the newbies always try to second this report and you know take a position before the release. They're always wrong. All of them, we we don't care about that. Um, the second thing is even well, I guess in the case of a huge blowout, we're expecting let's say we get 500, 400, which I doubt, by the way. I, I, it doesn't matter what I what I think. This is a live trading event. I don't have to. My opinion is irrelevant because in a live trading event, one of the beauties is you don't have to know anything. You just sit and wait and watch. But let's talk about some of the possibilities. The first and hopefully the most what we what we really get to see is that the report comes out positive or very positive. We see the market's reaction. We're in. We trade and va boom, make a few dollars. And then we wait until we see the market settle down, the, the, the reaction stabilizing or reversing. We get out of our trade, we take our futures, and we have a lovely weekend. In the rarer case, where it does just that, but um, really, really uh, kicks in and stays, we'll hold the I'll say goodbye, we'll leave the we'll part company, and um, those positions will stay good and profitable for into the next week. That happens as well. That's rare. Another outcome, of course, is that it's, well, it's, if it's negative, by the way, that's, that's an easy position too. The same condition, we, we, just, we, we just sell the dollar. And we outline that that's a possibility. It's really weak. And the markets react as we expect them to do. We, we simply trade those positions. Now, those are according to the script, as it were. There are a couple of them that that deviate entirely. One I mentioned before is it comes out in a clear way, either positive or negative, yet the market reaction is a flop. Nothing happens. There's no trade there. It either happens, it's over in, in, in less than a minute. You can't get in. That's it. Thank you. And nothing ventured, nothing gained. We go home. We maybe learned a little something, and that's the end of that. Another possibility is it reacts in a contrary way. Now, this has happened with more regularity in the last two years than it has in the last 20. Because we're in, un, you know, we're, very, we're in very unstable, volatile uh, waters now, as you know, as a result of the pandemic with T minus 10 minutes and counting, so I, 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 I will wrap this up. Um, and, and that happens. Positive report, back three, four months ago, I don't remember, we had an extraordinarily positive report. Expected, I don't know, 350, we got 460, huge thing. Hey, what happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's a possibility as well. Uh, there is a very rare possibility. I only make you aware of this out of, out of in the interest of full disclosure, but it hasn't happened in years. I don't recall it. But sometimes the, the servers jam up. Everything is gone. Hey, hey, try to go to, but they can't get a fill. That hasn't happened in years. Modern servers really, you know, are scalable to the degree that they can handle the surge. But that 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 is a, a remote possibility. So that's all of the possibilities we have, ladies and gentlemen. So are there any questions? We'll come back to this screen again. Um, okay, let's, let's deal with some of the questions. 
We've got uh, how to trade in gold in this event and the impact on other commodities, says uh, Sachin. Uh, I don't. I don't. I've had a few people over the years trade the S&P or attempt to trade the S&P. I don't. There is no real correlation in my mind. Again, you know, it's possible. It, it, I don't. I, it, that I can't understand it or don't or can't explain it is no reason for you if you do understand it and can't explain it to go right ahead. Don't you know? I'm not the be all and the end all of all market wisdom, but I don't and, and I don't. Uh, Louis asks if the NFP is positive, what's the impact of gold price? None that I'm aware of, Louis. I there might be. I tell you the truth, I never studied it. I never did a correlation study of, of, of correlating the event with the gold. I don't because I don't really think there is much of a correlation. Uh, Sudeep asks, can we go back in time and try what other factors might have acted contrarily? Certainly, that's back testing. It's highly recommended. But my guess is, Sudeep, and, uh, and this is speculation, my guess is you won't find much of a correlation. In fact, speaking of correlations, one of the most assumedly widely correlated events with T minus eight minutes and counting is the ADP, the Auto uh, Automatic Data Processing Report, which comes out the Wednesday before the before today. And that is a survey done by Automatic Data Processing. They were a payrolls uh, processor in Texas. And they process, I don't know, say 44, 45,000 payroll slips a week. And so there's often a, 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 a mistaken thought that, well, if that comes out positive, the NFP is going to come out positive. I did do a correlation study of that uh, not too long ago, a few years ago, uh, at the request of one of the brokers in the house and found that there's absolutely no correlation whatsoever. The correlation is, is almost exactly 0.5, meaning it's, it's, it's randomly correlated. And be, why? Because the ADP report has a data set of 40,000. The, uh, um, what is it? The BLS, the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics, is department, part of the Department of Labor in the United States, which, which prepares this report, has a data set of, 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 of something over 180,000 data points. So it's, it's four times, almost four, more than four times bigger, and therefore makes the ADP report insignificant, and therefore the low correlation. Uh, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Well, T minus seven minutes and counting. What risk management rules and measures do you apply to during news release, Osama has? Well, let's pair that question with um, Keegan's question about data sources. First of all, to answer Osama's question, risk management rules with request to news, I don't. Risk, mis, risk management rules are, are, are pertinent to the, to the en trade entry and trade exit. And those are, those are usually uh, rules I, I set uh, given uh, before I enter a trade. Um, Sometimes I don't. On a short-lived trade like this, I, I just enter freely and, and, and know when to get out and when not to get out. And you'll see. You'll see sometimes I, I get in, we're living this good, it dies promptly and I leave or not. So I hope I've answered your question, Osama. And with respect to Keegan's, uh, um, Keegan's question about the data sources, I can, that's very easy to answer. The first and best source, bar none, is The Economist, from London Economist. Expensive uh, journal, costs, uh, it's, it's many hundreds of pounds a year to subscribe worth every nickel. The uh, Economist is the best source of, of political, economic, financial data in the world, bar none, period. What you read in The Economist will appear uh, in the uh, more traditional news sources the following week. It's, it's, it's that good. So that's my first source. And then I read regularly the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Financial Times, Yahoo, Finance Portal, um, um, and I, and I have various and sundry specialized copy and tea uh, reports, the International Energy Agency uh, report, the CIA uh, site is, is worthwhile in cases of developments. There's a million of them. We live in the golden age of information with T minus five minutes and counting, by the way. We live in the golden age of information. The singular problem for us in, these, in this age is distilling the information from the, from the effluvia of data that, that flow over our eyeballs and desks. So that answers those questions. I hope any other questions, ladies and gentlemen. All right then. So now we just are we going to do a live trading session for the NFP? We are doing a live trading session for the NFP, Abraham. That's exactly what we're here for. The report is going to be out in four minutes and counting. And um, I guess you may have joined us late. But we did the setup. We showed you the setup. But now we're just waiting for the report to be released and uh, trade along with us. Trade along with us. That's that's exactly what we're doing, Abraham. 
Barbara asks, can we also trade the unemployment rate and the participation rate, et cetera? No. No, I don't. First of all, this is the only unemployment rate that matters. This unemployment rate is utter nonsense. It's the U6 that matters, and nobody trades that because people are afraid of it and don't really know what, know what it's about. This is the real unemployment rate in the United States. It's not the unemployment rate, as you would hear. That's, that's just utter nonsense. So no, the <clears throat> excuse me, Barbara, the answer is no. What time frame are you working on, Keegan? Um, I don't set, I, I, well, what, when, you, when you ask what time frame, if you ask what these are, the, oh yeah, I'm sorry, these are minute charts, Keegan. These are one minute charts. Um, that's my time frame in terms of what I'm looking at. In terms of the extent of the trade, that depends on, that depends on the outcome and the market reaction entirely. Remember, this is a live trading event. It's not like a regular trade with T minus three minutes and counting. It's not like a regular trade, Keegan, because uh, in a regular trade, I do my homework, I make my calculations, I you know figure my angles and whatnot, then I take the position and I set my uh, stops and and you know take profits and stop loss, et cetera, and, and, and that's the end of it, more or less. This is a live trading event. I can't do my homework. I can't really prepare. Yes, I know that they, they're expecting 325, it's fairly, frankly, a fairly irrelevant data point. It's this data point that's gonna get filled in two minutes. And by the way, this two minutes is gonna feel like a, a lifetime. These are the longest two minutes we have uh, each month. But um, so I don't really have, this is a much freer affair, ladies and gentlemen. This is a much looser, free flowing, less, um, uh, less less controlled event is really what I'm trying to say. You have to. That's why I said, and I'll say it again. You have to keep your head screwed on tightly. You have to keep your wits about you in this event. It's you know we got you got to be on the one hand quick on the trigger finger, on the other hand not too quick to make any uh, gross errors, and you have to be able to uh, uh, evaluate what's going on in real time. And most trades are not done in real time. Most trades you read the paper, you get an idea. You do your homework, you crunch a few numbers, and, and, and that's it. Sorry, which pairs do you set up again, Abraham? Easy, let me show you with T minus two minutes and counting. We'll make this quick. Aussie dollar, euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss dollar, CAD. Six major trading con currencies versus the US dollar. Aussie dollar, euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss dollar, CAD. Oh, and by the way, not all of those uh, necessarily react similarly. Some of them you'll see really, really, uh, really movers. Other ones are sleepy. It depends. That's why we do six. But on the other hand, that's not why we do 20. We, it, it's, it's, it's enough to keep our heads focused on those. For me, anyway, I'm speaking personally. Maybe some of you are even more uh, attention de deficient than I am can do more. That's about all I can hear. Okay, with T minus one minute and counting, we won't switch any more screens. Going to keep my head screwed on tightly now, and this will this minute will take a long time. Trust me. So we're expecting 325. Anything around that or greater than that, we expect the dollar to strengthen. But in all cases, we're going to wait for the market reaction, and then we'll go to the trading platform and, and take our position. A lot of people are going to be watching, a lot of people in the room today too, I might add, but a lot of people are going to be watching this report because of interest rates and central bank decisions and strength of the U.S. economy and the relationship between raising interest rates and causing a recession, which will cause unemployment. This is a crucial report, not only for us as traders, of course, but for economists, central bankers. A lot of people will get their eyes on this report today. Guarantee that. Here we go. 390. All right, moderate, not within the ballpark. Let's see how the market reacts. Dollar strengthening. Dollar looking good. Dollar, dollar strengthening across the board. Everything going according to script. But extraordinarily short lived. Huge tail. Not much. We've got the 
dollar yen, which has been great during these trades. I think I'm going to buy dollar yen. That looks like the only thing worth doing. I may wait a second minute though. Dollar yen, dollar Swiss, both looking good, but volume is high. Euro dollar completely recovered. They're all recovered to me. Only the dollar. I'm gonna go. And, I'm gonna go long the dollar yen. That looks good. I'm gonna take that position. Go to the trading platform. Trade dollar yen up. Buy dollar yen. Now it's going to jam up on me here. Well, while I'm waiting for that, let me just make sure things are all stable. Yeah, that's stable. I'm going to buy dollar yen. Dollar yen buy. Small position, maybe make it a little bigger. Really small. That's it. It's a thousand two lots. Okay, I bought the dollar yen. Not the only thing that's really cooking. No, here it is. Dollar Swiss is coming back too. Yeah, maybe take a position in the dollar Swiss as well. Dollar Swiss buy. Also, two lots. Okay, so far so good in those trades. See what I mean? We're looking at six, but there's only two of them here um, going along. Looks like I'm going to have to be quick to get out of the dollar Swiss. It's pushing, it's pushing, but it's not getting anywhere. Come on, come on, up you go. Okay. Might be the end of this. I think I'm going to leave them. I think I'm done. I'm going to close them out. Station work here. I'm gonna get my thing out. I'll probably be probably be done. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Here we go. What a disappointment! Lost out on the trade because it's jammed up. To refresh, but. I get out of the dollars. I might be able to get out of this with a small profit, but I'm not sure. This is still doing the damn whirly gig. Here we go. It's coming to life. Get out of these positions quick. Close them both. Confirm. Confirm. Tiny profit. Small loss. Nothing yeah. right. How about it? You know, how come it didn't close out? But the servers are a little slow. That's the end of that. That's the end of that. Came off break even, made a made a few dollars, nothing to write home about. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's keep our eyes open. Maybe it'll come back, but I doubt it because because um, it wasn't. I mean, it was significantly greater than three twenty five, but it wasn't gangbusters, you know. Didn't break out in gangbuster style. So minimal. Minimal. But hopefully you get the idea. Maybe I got out of those trades early. I'm not sure. The dollar yen though is still flying. I should have stayed with the dollar yen. And the dollar Swiss. Maybe I'll enter and meant to enter them again. They seem to be going well. Although the volume's fallen off. There's now less volume driving these. But I should have stayed in there. I panicked and exited early. I get down to the level that get in again. Yeah, I'm going to get into that dollar Swiss again. Dollar yen again. That looks good to me. Going good, and I'm going to trade it again. Dollar, oh. dollar yen up. Although the like, platform is really slow, that might be a reason to stay the hell out of it. Buy the dollar yen again. Buy dollar yen. Do it for two lots. 
see how that goes. Dolly Yen is looking good. And the volume is increasing. The volume is high. So the dollar Swiss. Let's get into the dollar Swiss again. Dollar Swiss buy two lots. I'm in. Okay, at least the execution is all right. No, I didn't. The dollar Swiss, just the dollar. Yeah. Dollar Swiss buy. No, I didn't get a confirmation on that. See what I mean by the fill? Processing. Okay, it's in with the dollar Swiss. Okay, they're doing okay. Those trades are working out all right. I should have stayed in them, but. Did I take $2? Okay, these trades are going well. DHS looks good. Yes, it is Sydney Sun. It is looking good. These trades are going all right. We make a few dollars today. See where we're at. This is this is working out very nicely for a change. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. We're making money on these trades. Okay. Yeah, these are going well. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so far, so good. These trades are holding up, and uh, we're doing nicely. We're in the money, and we're going to stick with them for a while. Any other questions? We can take some questions now. The Aussie dollar, the euro dollar are weakening, reversing. So is the dollar yen, so is the dollar Swiss. I think it's time to get out of these again. Servers, my server and my station is working slowly today. That's for damn sure. You can see it's dawdling along here. It's just the dollar Swiss that's really doing the best. I have two dollar Swiss yen. There was a dollar Swiss position. There was a mistake. Let's close this one. Out. Get rid of all of them. They're all they're all fooling around here. They're not serious. Why it's not doing anything is another question. But such is life. Well, they're still in the money. All right, I'm gonna stick with them for a while. So far, so good. Uh, about 10 minutes after the close, I may uh, bring the set to a close, ladies and gentlemen. Let's open the floor to some questions. Any questions? The dollar yen, the dollar Swiss is so far so good. I'm going to hold on to them. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Sir, how do you read, how to read these important data and its impact? How to build basic understandings of these data and its impacts? Sachin. Come to the sessions. Come to the session. Sachin, I assume you came late. It's not a complicated proposition, these NFP reports. They're fairly straightforward. So join in, come to the session from the beginning, and uh, you pick up a few things. It's not that complicated. The NFP is not a complicated affair. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's good money today. Um, not complicated. Just join us. Learn. Read, learn, read, learn. That's all I can tell you. Best way to, to gain skill in this. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? All right, then. This is going great guns for me. This is, these are really doing nicely. Take a final check here. That system's up. No, it's still dancing around. Here. But I can see on these screens shows me where I'm at. Some of them it shows me where I'm at. 
the game high match. So I'm well ahead here, and the Aussie Swisses that were in both positions are, are well are well into profit. So the dollar yen. These two trades have turned out very well. Why you decided to buy Orkan has easy. Easy, the dollar strengthened. It was a positive report. The market went along with as according to expectations, and I'm in. Not hard. Not, not hard at all. I saw the market reaction. I, 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 did, I did panic a bit, but I recovered and, and, and re-entered the positions. Do you think we're going into a recession? We're in a recession, Alejandra. We are in a recession, and, and there's no two ways about that. We're in a recession, and we're going to be in a recession for at least a year, a year and a half, in my humble opinion. I could be wrong, but that's my opinion. Inflation's on the rise. Prices are going up. Interest rise could be in a recession. I'm sure. Of it. Again, again. My Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? My pleasure, Alejandro. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going. There's no reason. I mean, you see the lay of the land here. You see what's going on. I'm going to bring the session to a close. Um, let me just say. Uh, that for those of you who are clients of the house, we're always humbled and, and very gra grateful for your patronage of us as your online broker. And uh, uh, I'm glad to hear that, Bobby. And for those of you who came to us via investing or another source and are looking for an online broker, please consider opening an account with us. We're stand up, straightforward, honest, upright brokers. We do the best we can for our clients. So we, no, we're not right at all. We have plenty of mistakes and we lose money like everybody else. But again, as I said earlier, we make more money than we do over the long run, than we lose over the long run, and that is the sine qua non of success in this business. But lose your will. Nobody in this business doesn't lose money. And uh, I'll just share with you one further fact. Um, it took me years to learn how to trade successfully. I lost my trading account three times in my life, twice with quite sizable sums of money, till I learned the ropes. So don't think this is some get rich quick scheme that any dope can master with no work. The business, like any other business, you have to put your time in. If, on the other hand, you're just here for a fun, for excitement, a little thrill, by all means, we're a good place, we're easy, our platforms are simple to use. If you're here for more long-term considerations, we have plenty of training and help and, 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 and professional brokers that are available to you on the phone. So I'm glad you enjoyed it, Keegan. I hope you'll all join us. By the way, let me tell you before I sign off, our next session is next Thursday the 9th uh, at uh, 11, it's 2000 GMT. Uh, we're going to talk about buy banks, sell tech, question mark, buy banks, question mark, buy, sell tech. Because generally speaking, when interest rate goes up, banks generally do better. We're going to talk about that. The tech stocks, the growth stocks are going to suffer in this environment. Again, according to the theory, we're going to take a critical look at those at those theories and, and see what to do with respect to those. So, ladies and gentlemen, next Thursday at uh, uh, 2000 GMT, we're going to have another session. I hope you'll join us. You'll all get... Um, links to the recording i'm really satisfied with the way these trades are going there they're really really va 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 boom and uh you don't see this every day don't let me lead you to believe i can do this all the time i can't all the trades are lining up by the way each and every one of them according to the textbook had you taken any one of these you would have been in the money nicely and probably furthermore so when will i close the trade uh, bobbin says when i see volume starting to peel back well, you'll notice volume on the bottom is still quite high, quite strong. So maybe soon, maybe soon. But as long as it's still going in my direction and the volumes are are uh, holding up, I'm in. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, let me say to you all on behalf of the staff and the management here at Alvexo, I'm your host, Seth Julian, wishing you all, ladies and gentlemen, the ability to trade with confidence. Bye-bye for now. My pleasure, Harley. Thank you for your participation. It really added to the session. I think that's going to do it for me. I think I'm going to exit at least the dollar yen. If I can, if my system comes to life, which God knows it isn't. My pleasure, Sundar. Thank you for joining us. See you on. My pleasure, Cornelius. Thank you for joining us.
My pleasure, Alex. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. Bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.